Community design is the third stage of safer school construction. During this stage, everyone, the community, the program manager, and the design team work together to design a school that will meet the community's needs and be safe during disasters. A community-based approach to safer school construction is a collaborative process, even during this technical design stage. In the past, some community-based school projects left design and construction up to the local community. This could invite disaster. मैं मैक तो मैन बेसिकली यहाँ पे होता है स्टोन की करते हैं ठीक है स्टोन की करते हैं लेकिन जो पुराने वाले करते थे स्टोन और जो अब स्टोन के करते हैं इसमें काफ़ी फ़र्क आ चुका है क्योंकि बीच में भी जो वॉल होती है वो अराउंडेड एटीन इंच की लंबी होती है और उसके बीच में ज्वाइंट दिए जाते थे पिछले पहले के वॉलों में लेकिन अब कोई ऐसा नहीं करता है अब बेसिकली करते हैं और ना उसमें आर वर्क प्रॉपर नहीं होता इसीलिए यहाँ पर बिल्डिंग ज़्यादा डैमेज होते हैं आर वर्क प्रॉपर और स्टिल कोई बांधता नहीं है टू बिल्ड अ सेफ स्कूल the program manager must make sure it is designed by a qualified engineer who considers all the hazards the school is likely to face. This knowledge and experience may not be in the community and is not something that can be left up to the community alone. We have a design responsibility to make sure that we have um, clear designs in place that meet national building codes that adhere to international codes if those national codes aren't in place, um, that we're able to um, make sure that we've uh, spoken to the community about what their needs are, um, that we've addressed what their needs are within those uh, workshops and talks um, and through that negotiation have come up with a plan that we can all agree on and meets, as I say, the codes required to actually make sure that this building is able to withstand a number of hazards that have been identified at um, certain points along the way. During this stage, the design team enters the process. This team, often an architect and an engineer, calculate the specific shape, layout and materials needed to build the school. The architect decides where classrooms, hallways, entrances and exits are and make sure the school design is welcoming and supports children's emotional and intellectual growth. The architect also makes sure the design meets any government standards for things like exits, ventilation and sanitation. The engineer takes the architect's layout and makes sure the school's walls, columns, beams, foundation and roof are strong enough. They must be designed to protect students and staff from the hazards identified during the planning stage. Para nosotros siempre es eh, importante la, la cuestión de la seguridad en la construcción. Entonces, eh, una de las principales cuestiones es eh, utilizar materiales de calidad y que, eh, bueno, que las vigas y, y pilares estén bien armados, que tengan una separación adecuada. Entre, entre estribos y que tengan la cantidad de metal adecuado y en la posición adecuada. Entonces, bueno, nosotros hacemos un prediseño, pero después eh, lo pasamos a, a un ingeniero guatemalteco y que, que termina de calcularlo según la, la norma guatemalteca, que es sencilla pero que está, está bien y funciona bien de cara a los terremotos. The design needs to be safe and inviting, as well as simple enough for builders to complete. If the design team selects unfamiliar materials that require skills that local builders do not have, the school may not be safe. The school design will be more successful when local builders can build a school with familiar materials. School staff will have an easier time maintaining and repairing it as well. Best of all, when a school design uses local materials and some familiar construction techniques, families can use the safer design concepts when they build other structures, like houses and shops. Para nosotros, para Arquitectura Sin Fronteras, el, el trabajo eh, con la comunidad es muy importante. O sea, eh, hacemos estos tipos de proyectos de vivienda, de, de educación y, y de salud, pero son casi eh, como una excusa para fortalecer las capacidades de la comunidad. 
Yo creo que ese es el punto fuerte de Arquitectura Sin Fronteras. Tratamos de mejorar las capacidades técnicas, mejorar las capacidades económicas, eh, de organización y, y de liderazgo en las comunidades, para que ellos mismos sean capaces de solucionar los problemas por su cuenta directamente, sin que necesiten ayuda externa. To make sure the school building will survive hazards, the design team may need to include some new construction techniques that local builders have never tried before. The first plan was to use local materials in building the school. So we depended on it and said yes, local materials are good. Depending on the area we are using it. For this area, there are some materials if you use it here, it will not last. We told them it will not be suitable for this area. And then some of the metals they use, I think the doors, the metals they use, we told them that uh, here the sea breeze is very, very high. It will not last for even two months, it will last. The design teams would introduce these new construction techniques carefully. Local builders may not be able to learn new construction techniques quickly enough, no matter how hazard resistant and innovative they may be. But if these safer construction techniques are added to what builders are already familiar with, they will only have to make small changes to their practices. They will not have to learn a whole new way to build. There are three steps in the design stage that ensures the community and the design team work together. Step one, consult with the community. Step two, sketch design options. Step three, finalize the design. Step one, consult with the community. During this step, the design team meets with the community and program manager. Together, they talk about the layout and strength of the school. ACF came with uh, some Spanish uh, architects. So they came, they started doing some workshop with the kids, with students, and letting them dream. How do you see your school? We, need, we are very interested in that. They created a, that kind of design with, the, with students. So the, los, so the las españolas que nos vinieron a, nos dieron una charla sobre los, si queríamos construir el, el instituto de un nivel o de dos niveles. One of the most important parts of this conversation is how well the school will perform when a hazard strikes. The architect talks with the community about layout and aspirations. The engineer with the program manager and the school management committee about how strong the school needs to be. The engineer always makes sure the building performs to life safety standards. Life safety means the school will not collapse and will protect students and staff during a disaster. However, life safe buildings often need to be torn down and rebuilt after large disasters because they become weakened and dangerous. For a rare hazard, life safe may be enough. But if the community experiences large disasters frequently, they may want the school to perform better than just life safe. With more construction materials, the building can be designed for immediate occupancy. This means the school will not be heavily damaged and can be used during and after the disaster. If the school is used as a temporary shelter during disasters, the design team needs to plan for this possibility. They need to ensure the school is large enough and built to be strong enough for this use. Balancing construction cost with disaster performance is an important decision the design team needs to discuss with the community and program manager. During community consultation, the design team also gets to know the school site. This is important as the type of soil on the site may change how strong the school foundation needs to be. A sloping site might need some grading or a swampy site might need to be drained. If the school needs to survive hazards such as earthquakes, the design team may even need to hire scientists such as geologists to thoroughly investigate the site. After consulting with the community and understanding the site, the design team can move on to the next step. Step two, sketch design options. The design options are models or drawings that include the ideas discussed. They show different ways the school building could be laid out and which materials might work. 
the community then looks at these models or drawings and discusses which option is best for them. Of course, the engineer makes sure all options will keep students and staff safe during disasters. The design team should clearly highlight the safety features of each option. When the design team shows the community the design options, the team should make sure they understand that safer school construction doesn't mean an expensive building. It means using materials and techniques effectively. We make sure that the community are engaged at every phase. They, we do monthly, uh, monthly meetings that we engage the community, the elders, especially the elders of the community, and we explain to them that uh, this is where we've got into, this is where we're heading towards the next month. So they do appreciate every state that we've got into. So. Simple changes, such as adding a higher portion of cement in a concrete mix, considering where to place the school building on a site, or carefully bending and placing reinforcing bars in a concrete column can increase safety, and with only a small increase in cost. Some safer construction techniques do not add any cost. The conversation between the community and design team helps the community understand that buildings can be built to protect them in disasters. Once the design team understands the community's preferences, they can begin the next step. Step three, finalize the design. This is the step where the design team takes the option the community has chosen back to the office to work out the calculations and final layout. Many decisions made now will affect safety later. Of course, the size and strength of construction materials the design team choose are important but so are other architectural decisions they make. A raised foundation can keep floodwaters out of classrooms. Window shutters and roof vents can lower classroom temperatures in hot climates. Handrails and ramps can help students avoid trips and falls. Classroom doors that open outwards can allow students to evacuate better. All these design choices are part of building a safer school. Finalising the school design is a very technical step, but part of this step is also deciding who will manage the construction process and how much the community can be involved. Community involvement will often depend on the skills, experience and interest of the community. This will guide the design team in how they communicate and draw the design. If an experienced contractor is hired, the design drawings will probably be traditional blueprints. However, if the community will be heavily involved, the design team needs to make sure everyone can understand the drawings. Design drawings may need to be pictorial. Consulting with the community, sketching design options, and finalising the design, make sure the school design is safe and supported by the community. The school management committee, government authorities, and design team approve the design and the construction stage can begin.